Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? Dom D'Amelio. Dom, welcome to the Barbarian Hour. First things first, how are you doing on this fine evening? Uh, late summer, I guess we would call it. How, yeah. How's your late summer treating you, Dom? It's been great. Yep. Getting a little playtime in, trying to wrap things in, take advantage of the nice weather, and um, it's been a good summer. For those of you who don't know who Dom D'Amelio is, Dom is the director of the – National Middle School Duels out of Toledo, Ohio. Had to pivot last year and go to Rossford, right, Dom? That's correct. Yeah, you're that wasn't number, fun. You're number seven for the National Middle School Duels. I've been covering it all. So hopefully this seventh year we get to have it. Uh, what are the dates on the National Middle School Duels, Dom? Yep, so we're this year, November 13th and 14th. Um, so it'll be a two-day Saturday-Sunday tournament. And typically we run um, four matches per day. So um, we'll have 32 of some of the best teams in the country attending from across uh, the country. So um, we're excited to see a lot of our top teams return and looking to have another group and return to, to normalcy here. I can't wait. You guys did a great job with it last year. Dom is also the parent of Dylan D'Amelio, four-time state champion for the Genoa Comets, and you guys won six titles. You were assistant coach. Bob Bergman was a head coach. You guys won six individual titles in Division Three in Ohio in 2018? That's correct. 2018, the Comets. Right. You broke uh, almost every record in Division Three. I believe the scoring record and the uh, most individual champs was six. I think Graham's had seven, so Graham still has you beat in that. But um, that's not bad. We've had some pretty good teams. We also had five consecutive um, champs. Yeah, so no, that's right. So five consecutive weight classes. Starting with uh, Oscar Sanchez? Uh, no, so Oscar won at 20, and then we had a run at um, 32. So we missed 26, then we had 32, 38, 45, 52, 60. Wow. Yeah. So it started at, at it started with uh Julian. Julian, yes. Julian, Dylan, Margello, gotta help me out here. Contos, yep, Lamangi. Contos and Lamangi. Yep. Wow, that is amazing. And then most of those guys went on to D one, didn't they? Uh they all did. They all yeah, they all were at D one at one point or another, right? Correct. Yep. Wow, that's crazy. And then Last year, did Dylan go three and two at the NCAAs or two and two? Three and two. He had a crazy come from behind match in the 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 Consies. The match to get to the uh, round of sixteen, I want to say it was crazy. He scored like twelve or thirteen points. He came from behind. Who was that against? Yeah, I want to say that was um, North Carolina. If I it can was remember correctly. Wild. It was a wild one, man. Yeah, he got himself in a hole. He was down and then basically took him down twice, took it to overtime, and got the takedown in overtime. Yeah. That one got me fired up because you could watch all the matches last year. So when that came on, I was like, oh, come on, keep hustling, keep hustling, because he just chops wood. Dylan D'Amelio chops wood. You know that. <laughs> he chops wood, right? He's got a gas tank. That's yes. one of his strengths, yeah. Definitely. Uh so, Nash, we'll, we'll come back to him because I want to talk Buckeyes yep. with you. Of course, everybody wants to hear about Buckeyes and what it's like to be a parent in, uh, you know, one of the top programs in, in the country. But um, back to the National Middle School Duels. We got our intro out of the way with who Dom D'Amelio is. Dom, tell me about wanting to start an elite-level event, a national-level event seven years ago, right? And, and, and it was in its infancy at the Seagate Center. And why did you think you could make something in Toledo, Ohio, work with the National Middle School Duels? What, where, where was the where the vision come from, Dom? Yeah, uh, I think it was a, a joint effort. So we we're looking for um, a fundraiser for our nonprofit club, and I want to credit the Evans. So Jamie Evans, um, his son Russell's for 
Eric Burnett um, at Illyria. And I think he's going to wrestle at Indiana. He's a Hoosier. I remember. That's correct. Yep. He's a Hoosier. Yep. So he was part of that vision. And um, we connected with you, Zeb. I mean, you had some great contacts and got us going. And, and then from there, it was a matter of finding the right venue and attracting t- you know, national teams. We didn't want it to be a, um, a middle school uh, school teams. We wanted it to be national teams. And I, and I, you know, having done the circuit myself, I knew there was a need for those types of tournaments. I mean, there's only so many national dual tournaments that you can attend that are, have a good location. I mean, so you, we have a great location. Um, we have a great facility. And then a couple of lessons learned. I just, you know, we want to minimize buys. Uh, we don't want any waiting around time. And so we, we, we created a format where we have even number of teams and we have no buys um, and we try to be done at five o'clock every night. And that's a huge benefit to teams when you're traveling because then you have some fun time too, you know, so you can go out as a team to dinner, the coaches can get together. Um, you know, we don't have these long, crazy um, downtime. We're not rustling to eight o'clock at night. Um, but the, the level of competition is incredible. Um, people that are there in attendance are amazed at uh, uh, how good these middle school wrestlers are. And, you know, a lot of these wrestlers are future D1 college wrestlers that come. You've had some pretty interesting things happen because you have teams coming from the West Coast, to the East Coast, all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico, uh, all the way, the whole Eastern seaboard. Uh, you know, like I said, the California teams, they always, there's usually a couple teams from California, but the most interesting one to me is you got this random phone call. What was the phone number that you told me that, that was it from Wyoming or was it St. Paris, Ohio, or was it state college? What was the random phone call? You got? Where, what was the number? I forget. Not the actual number. What was the area code that was weird to you? In, in oh, I don't. David Taylor. <laughs> oh, yeah. What was the number? Wasn't it a state college number? It was like, you're like, it's a number I never see. That was, I think it was Ohio number. Yeah. You were like, oh, St. Paris or something, right? Yeah, right. And then um, um, he even said who he was, and I didn't connect who it was. Um, you thought it was the dad, and, didn't you? Yeah, I, yeah, I thought it was a dad or something when uh, when he called. Um and then when I figured out who he was, um, I didn't connect it because the number was in Ohio, not Pennsylvania. Yeah, it wasn't um, State College. It was St. Paris or something probably, right? Urbana right. or whatever. Right. It was, pick one. right. Oh, my God. Yeah. I remember you telling me about it. I was like, are you serious? And I love that you – I love it how you just told it. You didn't put two and two together as to who it was calling. It was David Taylor. I love it. And No. And, and you know what was impressive? He coaches every match. It, it's he's into it. That's what's the best thing about it. He's not on his phone the whole time, and he's into every match. He's into the kids. I like that. No, he's phenomenal. So this year I was texting him about, you know, get it, if he wanted to come back. And this is while he's training to, you know, for the Olympics. So I was texting him this summer, and he got back to me right away, uh, said, yes, we're interested. Uh, um, you know, wished him good luck. He was super appreciative. Um, and then when he got back from the Olympics, he wrapped things up with payment and whatnot. And no way. You know, yeah, I didn't want to bother him. Um, He's going to the world um, in Oslo. In, in, yeah. You know that, right? Right, right. Yeah. So I was trying to be sensitive to that. And, and uh, what a phenomenal person, though. I mean, that's awesome. That's first really class, cool. professional. Yeah. You know what, though? I got to give Yazdani some credit, the Iranian, you know, the defending Olympic champion. He is closing the gap on David. It's getting closer, okay? I just I got to give the guy credit where credit's due, you know? He's closing the gap. First time, David pinned him. Second time, I want to say it was 11-6. And this last time, David had to hit him with his patent. Dave, David hits a lot of patented double legs. <laughs> I've never seen him hit a double leg. <laughs> Have you ever seen him hit a double leg? No. You ever seen him run anybody down with a double leg? No. That is, that is the motor. That is how the Americans are built, man, the motor. 
the most. Yeah, you know what for I mean? sure. They're they're known for their cardio. You don't see yeah. American gas yeah. at that stage. No, no way. No, and your your son is like that. Your son will do things that he's not normally doing to guys. He's not, you know, he hits, he's, he's a single leg guy. He's always attacking. He's pulling the head. He's always moving forward, taking ground, right? He'll do things when guys get tired. I think he even did something crazy in that match where he came from behind us to put it to overtime. He did some takedown he wouldn't normally do, I want to say. It was yeah. something. It, he was just, but it's hustle. I think it's hustle. And I think they get the guys so tuckered out that it's like anything will work at that point, I think, because they're, they've worked so hard to get the guy tired. The Yaz yeah, guy. and he's – Dylan's figuring that out, too. He's starting to understand that he has a gas tank and to use that to his advantage um, and to end a match without any energy. So don't save it, right? You know? Yeah. You got this great gas tank, go. Yeah. And I think the Yazdani guy, the Iranian, uh, the king, as he's called in their country, he gets more – he gets something like six times the social media. I don't know if I've got that right, but hold on. This will this will blow your mind. Something like it's way over double. I know that he gets like six times the social media engagement on, let's say, a tweet or whatever whatever platform they're on. He gets six times the social media engagement on anything he posts. Six times what the Yankees get. Wow. <laughs> Wow. He's the he's their he's the guy. It's not a footballer. He's, a he's yeah. the guy. He is their most revered athlete in Iran. So wow. I think, and I and I've watched him since he was young, and he's always had the patented club underhook, club underhook push, club underhook push, push. And he's got offense. You know, it's not like yeah, Donnie's this limited guy that can only club underhook push. He's got great short offense, but he gets guys so tired that they start taking dive shots and he just goes behind. Oh, got him. He tacks a lot of guys out. He really, really, really tuckers people out. So that's what it's amazing about what David Taylor does to him. And I love it. You're this guy's preparing for Yazdani. He's preparing for the world. Right. But he's still in contact with you like that. That says a lot to me. I think Scotty Burnett said some stuff like that. He said, yeah, man, whenever you communicate with David, he back to you immediately. And you love to see that. Right. You love to see that. Yeah. I mean, that's what you love about the sport. You really feel like anybody in the sport is approachable. It's not like maybe other sports. Um, guys at the top will talk to anybody. Um, they're all accessible. And I have no problem reaching out to them, you know, asking them for a camp or, you know, you want to bring a team to our tournament, you know, however we can connect. I love it. And then, you know, if you look at it, what's crazy about that is Dylan Russell's for Tom Ryan. Tom Ryan is the king of that. Tom Ryan is always trying to build the build and grow the brand for Ohio State like they need any help, right? He's always right. about like, but you could be the lowliest person off the street. And if you want to come in and see the Jennings Center, the guy's more than open to doing that. You know yeah. what I mean? And I think you're really learning the end of that now, running this tournament and your kid being in that program, right? Like I think you're you're seeing the bigger picture. Maybe oh, seven yeah. years ago when you started dealing with me, maybe promotion wasn't as important as it is now i guess i would say maybe to you it wasn't right yeah i I, i've been getting to understand that um you know tom ryan's one of the masters um he's always looking at the big picture always promoting the sport always promoting program you know his uh endless time available i mean he seems like he's uh endless energy i mean just constantly you know walking talking billboard He's always living in that moment, you know. He's always really ready to promote Ohio State. And, and when the, the biggest thing that epitomized that to me, Dom, was when he they lost at the NCAAs in 2018 in Cleveland. This guy still sat and did a half an hour interview after they lost. Right? I was like, it was amazing to me. And, and it, it was the greatest NCAA finish that I have ever seen in my life in person, the greatest race, right? It's, it's up there, you know, with when um, Arizona state won in the eighties, it's up there with when Iowa state beat Iowa in 80, 80, I think that was 87. And then 88, the sun devils won it. And some of those nineties races, right? Like it was, it, 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 every bit of it's every bit of that, you know, comes down to miles Martin getting caught in a mixer by Bo nickel. who's beaten in the NCAA finals before. 
but the guy was still ready to go. He was still ready to go, and he was on. He's in on mode all the time. And I I really appreciate that. And, like, to to your point, you can talk to anybody in wrestling. Everybody. Everybody's accessible. It's not like this LeBron James has this layer of managers and agents and this just, like, this layer of protection, multiple layers of security. There's none of that. No wrestlers need security, right? Right, (laughs) right. doesn't need security. John Smith doesn't need security. They, They want that. If you want some, come and get it, I guess, right? Right. And that's what it's awesome about it. You can walk up and chat with anybody. I really enjoy that about it. Uh, you know, the National Middle School Duels, you know, when we talked about the seven years in its infancy, you guys went right out of the gate at Seagate. And, and Seagate isn't known for its wrestling, hosting of wrestling events. I watched the uh, CIT there when I was a freshman. Scotty Burnett wrestled there. I remember watching Michael Zicky wrestle there. The great Walsh teams wrestled there. The great St. Edward teams wrestled there. I remember, do you remember that, Dom, in the 90s? I do. That was crazy. It was probably 94, 95, I think. 95, I want to say. And, uh, man, I think Scotty wrestled Mike Kozicki for third place or something crazy like that. It was something crazy like that. So, you know, we're dating ourselves a little bit here. I'm old. I get that. But that is the only wrestling event that I ever knew of that was at the Seagate Center. How did you guys get to the Seagate Center? And what's it been like working with those folks? And, and every, it's a one-stop shop. Hotels connected to it restaurants, everything's all right there. Why the Seagate Center in Toledo, Ohio for the National Middle School Duels, Tom? Yeah, so um, some of that was, um, I used to attend a tournament in Battle Creek, Michigan, um, and they have the arena connected to a hotel and loved it. Parked my car and didn't touch it for three days, walked to wrestling, walked to restaurants, and it was a great experience. and so when we're looking at venues, we had a couple of options. And when we approached the Seagate team, um, they're willing to negotiate on, on a venue. I think they wanted something, you know, new. Um, and then Destination Toledo, they're the, the Northwest Ohio marketing um, for Lucas County and for the, the, the whole area. They, they jumped in and helped. And so between Destination Toledo, Seagate, uh, they've been phenomenal to work with accommodating. They, you know, they let us set up early. Um, they even help us set up sometimes. Um, they let us use their printers. Um, it's just been a great partnership. That's excellent. And, and yeah, and it happened. And that's the big thing. That's the big thing that everybody says to me that the greatest aspect weigh-ins, everything tournament, you know, because it's three days for them. You know, they show up on Friday, they weigh in, they wrestle right. Saturday, Sunday. That's how it's always been set up. They never have to leave. Now, last year, there was a pivot. Last year's the greatest excuse in the history of excuses, a pandemic where hundreds of thousands of people die, right? right. But you guys were still able. Yeah, health department showed up. I don't know how you got that event. Well, we were, we were, I, I couldn't believe it. It was incredible. Yes. So we had planned this tournament at Seagate and had assurances that everything was going to go forward and we'd have to put some protocols in place so we wrote a basically um you know procedures and a plan and submitted it and it got approved and then and then we were told that we couldn't have the event um and so within within a week within a week do i have that right was that a week it was it was probably about three weeks out three weeks out Yes. For people who don't know anything about venues, Dom, that that isn't good. No, no. When you got teams traveling from all regions of America, West Coast, Southwest, okay, the Southeast, Northern Plains, Midwest, East Coast, right? Northeast. Yep. You had teams from all of those places. None of them canceled. You moved the venue how do you find a venue within the same like striking distance because it's an urban area of about i want to say five hundred thousand people right the the toledo area is about five hundred thousand. that's a good estimate yeah Yeah, something like that so um we got the message on a monday that we were done at seagate and lucas county and um so i got on a call with um our friend from jared 
at OEC. And we talked to him about options. And uh, Jody Burnett, she got on the call. So we had a three-way call in a matter of minutes. And we checked out um, Cedar Point. That wasn't available. Um, so then Jody had the idea of checking out the dome in Perrysburg. It's a bit, the largest, second largest soccer dome in the world, or I'm sorry, in the U.S. Um, Massive. So we went out and looked at it that day. So that after work, we flew out there, checked it out. In a matter of 24 hours, we switched venues. But then, then we had to restart from scratch the entire tournament. So we had to reconnect with the teams. We did have a couple teams drop out, um, and then we replaced them. We replaced a couple teams. Um, but everything changed. I mean, we had to do everything online, no contact. Uh, we had to limit spectators. Um, and then we had the health department visit us on site five times, including weigh-ins. Um, so that was incredibly stressful. But that, that part was like, to me, the fact that they, because you, you know how health departments were and you understand the age we're in, right? Everybody, right. people are scared, man. People yeah. are scared, and, and rightfully so, right? People are scared. If there's people with underlying conditions, they should be all that much more scared, right? Because they're more vulnerable. We, we know that. That's something we do know about this, right? The, you know, obesity, heart conditions, asthma, any of these other things, you're, you're even at a higher level of diabetes. All these things make people even more at risk. And what was crazy was, I believe it was five spectators per team or 10 spectators per team. Something it would started at 10 and got chopped down to five. I want to say it, you got, I know that it got taken away. Yeah. So there was a state mandate on how many spectators you could have. And we had to get an exemption to not count the wrestlers, you know, the participants. Um, and then during weigh-ins, the County told us that we had to cut the number of spectators that were allowed in half. And so that wasn't a lot of fun circling back with the teams and kind of doing like a, a you know, they had to take turns um, letting people in. And that was, that was not fun to implement um, because if you travel to go watch your, I know if I travel to watch one of my sons um, and I'm told that I, you know, I, I can't watch the match. Um, I'd be upset. So the New Jersey folks weren't super pumped. Nobody was. No, nobody no, was. But nobody they, wrote, was. they figured it out. They figured it out. They made it happen. They were able to watch that. Some of them rotated. Some of them would stay out in their cars because it's not like Seagate in the sense that you aren't in a parking garage. And it was that crazy windstorm. I can't believe we never lost power. It yeah, we're wild. yeah, we're in a soccer dome and there was a windstorm where miles went up to 60 miles an hour. So that whole place was shaking at one point. That was and I came home to a tree that fell down because of the storm. So I could have been there. I could have made it happen for you. Could have <laughs> diced that tree up. I just got a 20 inch bar on my uh saw. Dom, no trees are safe. Now I just want you to know that. Nice. No trees nice. are safe. But but you know, hey, like you guys made it happen though. That was what was wild happen. about it to me. And yeah, you know, Bo Bassett was there. That whenever I can see Bo Bassett, that's amazing. His brother was there. I got to watch some crazy matchups with the Minions out of Georgia. I mean, you know, obviously uh, M two was there. David was not at this one because he was training. Um, Coach McKnight brought the team, and it was just a really cool experience. Uh, they actually, M2 did win it, right? Um, they took second. No, who beat them? Dynasty? Uh, Dynasty. Dynasty, yep. Dynasty beat them. They were runner-up. I remember I called the match. Yep. Because Bo Bassett was on Dynasty. Well, what's funny, you mentioned um, the talent. Uh, a lot of times I'm seeing this phenomenal wrestling and then later figure out who they are, you know, or years later, and it's like, whoa. Um, well, yeah, I videoed all those pools, all the pool matches, and we have all those pool matches, so we'll probably be throwing some of those archives up here to promote the event. But the event's full, right, Dom? Like, there's there's no room. It's it's a waiting list, Oh, uh, we're right? full. We're full. We got 32 teams, and we have a waiting list, and I still have other teams contacting me. 
Um, so we're really no longer advertised for teams. We just, we support, you know, viewerships and. Talk about that. Talk about who you're bring, who, who you started off with and what your partnerships are as far as viewing and streaming and what you do with the event for national middle school duels Dom. yep so all the all the matches are streamed live um this year we're going with track again so we either have flow or, or track uh stream so now that flow owns track um it'll be a track event this year um but they have a great setup so i mean uh the computer setup is fairly easy um so it's cool that any anybody can watch these matches live or they'll or they you know they're recorded and will be available um and then zab it's awesome that you come in the last day and, and do some uh commentating um i think that really adds some excitement um and so anybody back home can watch these matches um and they're pretty intense i mean it's it's crazy heated i mean russ roughs are really stressed out you know with the you know, the coaches and, uh, the, you know, some of the matches and they typically, the, the big matches go down the wire at the end. It's amazing. Exciting. The level's amazing. The scrambling's amazing. Hey, are my guys coming back? Are they my are. guys coming back? Yep. So they're one of our valued sponsors. So Defense Soap has been there every year with us since the inception. Um, and they provide all the supplies for the table. So all the defense wipes and all the gear. Yep. They've been phenomenal. You know, you bring Jared up and you talk OEC. These are, these are all my partners. These are all the people that I work with. Uh, it, it, I didn't pick their name out of a hat, right? So the, we've kind of gravitated towards one another, right? The, these different organizations, these different groups, these different companies. They've, it, you know, you don't pick names out of a hat, Don. What are you looking for in a partner? Somebody else wants to dive in and wants to be a part of the National Middle School Duels. Is there still time? Can people still jump in if they want to and do some type of partnership with uh, National Middle School Duels in Toledo, Ohio? Absolutely. Um, so we partner with Rudis for our gear, and they've been phenomenal to work with. Um, they send three, four, five guys out. They set up their own booth. Um, they have some custom gear for our events. Um, they use our logo, so we developed a logo. Um, and the gear is crazy popular. It's you know, they donate a, a backpack, uh, the raffle off, and Jesse Lang and what they've done is they've been great partners. Um, we talk ahead of time. They communicate instantly. They provide um, volunteer shirts for us. Um, it's, so it's a great arrangement. And then Defense Soap has been solid. I mean, they sent out the all the gear ahead of time. Um, we have all the, you know, the defense wipes and all the cleaning supplies available. Keep up with our sanitation and they've been a great sponsor. And then Jared with the Ohio Athletic Committee. I mean, we use, they're up to, we use a bunch of their mats. So most of their mats are from OAC and um, Jared provides advice beyond just supplies. I mean, Jared, I bounce off ideas off of him. He helps with some of the tournament formatting. I mean, he's a veteran of running tournaments, so he's just a wealth of knowledge. And he's also, also accessible, um, instantly gets back to me. Um, there's not anything I wouldn't do for him. I mean, he's just, he loves wrestling, and he's in it for the right reasons. Yeah, a, a college teammate of mine for four years, and I've been friends with those folks since the early 90s. Offers are great people, and I just love working with them. Uh, when you guys, though, I mean, ex as far as expanding partnerships, you know, you talk about the bonuses of having all those other, all your partners that you have thus far. What does somebody got to do to jump on board if they want to? I think they would have to provide a service that we don't have, you know, so we don't we don't certainly don't have everything, um, and we're always open to new ideas. I mean. I'm always learning something from somebody. So if there's something else we can do to promote the event, to run a, a, a you know, a more efficient tournament, to have it be more, more customer friendly, um, I'm all for it. You know, we might have to reach the out to the, we might have to reach out to the mule. We might have to reach out to the sticker mule. The sticker mule, 
They do. They just did these for Bomber Wrestling Club. This is my kids' wrestling club, Bomber Wrestling Club. Jeff Barney right. did this. So Sticker Mule, we might have to reach out to them because they can provide a service. Trust me. I'm a Sticker Mule. Uh, I believe in Sticker Mule. I order Sticker That's Mule cool. monthly. Good stuff. Those are the Ohio stickers. You've gotten these from me before. So we might have to reach out to the Mule. The Mule might be uh, – one that I'm definitely into. I think that that, that would be something. That, but a partner like that who offers, who has, you know, they, they're in the wrestling space and they have something that's uh, redeemable, right? Right. You know, the, the whole mug. Look at the mug. Look at the mug. It's all mule. All mule stuff. All mule stuff. That's cool. That is so cool. So maybe the mule might, maybe that might be, uh, they might be on the hit list. We'll have to look into that. That's a yeah, great Yeah, maybe idea. The, mule, the mule, I know they're on Iron Man. Haddad said they're at Iron Man. You know, they uh, threw some, some swag at him. So, uh the, the mule's in, but uh, all right. I know this tournament's successful. I know we could go to sixty-four teams. Why haven't you done that yet? Um, well, I think COVID delayed that, so we were more focused with just running a tournament last year. Um, we were looking to to increase, and increase for the right reason, not 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 to make more money. I mean, it's it's not about that anymore. Um, so I think if if I know that Seagate's going through some renovations, and so if they have the space, we'll we'll certainly expand. Um, it's just a matter of of making sure we can still run an efficient tournament and have an adequate space. And bringing it back to Seagate was a no brainer, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you guys did that. You know, my dad built Seagate. Did not know that. Yeah, That's Iron cool. Workers Local 55 was all over that. So the iron workers did that's cool. Listen, to my dad was talking about some of the columns in it and telling me some old stories about old Sue He can do you know the artist out there on Woodville Road? The guy with all the big sculptures. You know what I'm talking about on Woodville um, Road? I'm not sure. No. Um, it would be almost by like Fosteria Road and like uh Martin okay. Road. You know what I'm talking now? Yep, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's Mike Sohekin. Mike Sohekin is like a world famous sculptor. He was an iron worker with my dad. I remember going there as a kid, and this guy's an artist. He's a he's like a real eccentric guy. And is that was is that your guys' district or is that Lake's district where he lives? He's just I think that's um, Lake's district. It's Lake's that's district. right on top. Yeah, it's right. Yeah, like right on the border, right? Right. Yeah. You know where I'm talking? The big brick oh, yeah. house. Oh yeah. Yeah, that guy was an iron worker, and I think he uh, he was one of the guys that worked with my dad on Seagate. That's cool. Very that, cool. Why, you didn't know that about that guy, did you? I didn't you? know that. No. Yeah, that guy's an iron worker. That guy, we used to deliver all the wood chips to him whenever we were in that, that East Toledo area. I was like, one day I'm like, what do you do with all these wood chips? He goes, oh, I, I got to kill my lawn. <laughs> I'm like, what? He goes, I need something to kill my lawn. I was like, I don't know if that's how it's supposed to work. I think you're supposed to like mow your lawn. He didn't want to, he wanted to sculpt, do iron work. He rode a motor, motorcycle. He, I never saw the guy wear a t-shirt either. He always was wearing some type of vest. He's a different cat, Dom. Mike Sahikin's a different cat, but they were, they were in on that. The whole point is they built Seagate and a lot of the Ohio, Illinois, or what used to be Ohio, Illinois building. What is the Ohio, Illinois building now? Is it like fifth, third bank or something? Do you know what that became? That, that the biggest. That's, that that's that. I think that's correct. Is that correct? Yeah, it's it's a bank now. It's not OI anymore. Ohio, Illinois. So, it's wild though, because that's my family built Toledo. That's you know that's a big part of what the iron workers do. So, and then you know if you know the Blazes, the Blazes they're they're big into local fifty five, and um, old man Blaze Joe Blaze number two, the kid who was state champ is Joe Blaze number four. Do you know that right? And they're the, and they work they work the tournament don't they the blazes work the tournament they do they do yeah. Yeah. so it's yep. so yep. those are iron worker people if you didn't know that yeah all iron worker people and those are you know and then we're uh, my family's pipe fitters too big blue collar uh, big blue collar unionized city is Toledo right Dom yeah yeah it's a blue collar town for sure it's as blue collar as it gets do you remember the old Jeep plant Dom oh yeah my dad retired with forty years. From Jeep, yeah. So my best friend went to Genoa. I don't know if you know this. My best friend went to Genoa. His name is John Watkins. He's since moved to the Pacific Northwest. He lives, um, he was in Portland for like 2003, for 18 years. 
He just moved out of Portland to Sandy at the base of uh, Mount Hood. Okay. He moved 45 minutes east of uh, Portland, Oregon. His dad was a millwright there for, I want to say, like 45 years. He was a millwright in the Jeep plants. He was a millwright in the Jeep plant that had the J-E-E-P with the, the you know, it had the Comanche truck driving on oh, yeah. it. It, yeah. Had the, it had the Wranglers all. It had a, on each letter was either a, was either a, a Jeep product hanging off of it or on top of it. That was cool. Remember that? Oh, yeah. And that's old Willie's Parkway, too. That's not – that's where the old factory was, and then they just moved it. Caddy Across Corner. How, how far away is the – from the old factory from the new one? A mile, it, two miles? It's like a mile across. Yeah. On the other it's right side across the – Yeah. 274, 475? 75. 75. Okay, yeah. 75. It's right, right across 75. So Toledo is an interesting place. There's a lot of history there. A lot of rustling history, too. I wish that they had the uh, – I wish that they had the uh, – the World Cup there, because I used yeah, to get to watch. That was fun. I saw John Smith lose at Savage Hall, and Mark Schultz both lost at Savage Hall. How wild is that, right? Wild stuff. Okay, last thing I got for you. What is it like being? What was the process like? We we talked process. We talked recruiting process, right? What was the process like? Having a four-time state champ, son. And then having to do the recruiting with him, he was an excellent student. Your kid was, you know, he's as all American of as an all American kid as there is. Dylan D'Amelio has one, always been one of my favorite kids. Great kid, does everything right, you know, and it shows in his wrestling. What was it like being his dad and sitting back and watching the recruiting process and being a part of it? Yeah, I think I think we handled that that process really well. I'm really happy with how we tackled it. So. Um, Mike Matt, Matt and got us going to Michigan RTC practices, um, Dylan's freshman year. And so that got some exposure. And then at Fargo, Mike introduced me to the Minnesota and, and, uh, and Damian Hahn at, at Cornell at the time. Um, so I was talking to the Minnesota coaches and met him at Fargo, um, you know, drinking a beer at BW3s. That was cool. Um, and so, so we pushed to start visiting schools, um, early his sophomore year, we started visiting schools on our own dime, but, um, I didn't want to rush the process. So, you know, we were talking to Minnesota, Michigan coaches and eventually we talked to the Ohio state coaches cause we went to our Ohio RTC practices, um, his uh, sophomore year. And so I would highly recommend to anybody to get to RTC practices and, and, and start making connections with some of these coaches. Uh, there's some, I don't, I don't know all the NCAA recruiting rules, but some of it is you have to contact them. They can't contact you. There's dead periods. Um, so that worked out. I think it worked out extremely well. Um, by the end of his junior year, he had options, and um, and it, it came down to some tough decisions. Um, but we were. It was a slow process for us, a steady process, and and thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, at the end, it got a little stressful because um, you wanted to make the right choice. What is your well, looking back? Advice. It went great. What is your biggest advice? If you're talking to a parent, I don't know if my kid's D1 or if you know, someone's a bona fide, right? Like, you know, someone's a, just a bona fide, a JD Bergman an Ian Miller, a Dylan D'Amelio, you know, the caliber the Matt and boys for talking Northwest Ohio, right? I think you can kind of tell. So we, we did a, we did combine camps. Um, and, you know, the, the coaches aren't always a lot of, aren't really allowed to talk to you when you're a junior, or at least at the time they weren't. Um, so, you know, you need to go up to them and say hi to them and whatnot. But I think some of that is seeing how you compete at that level. Um, and, you know, not being afraid to ask questions. And um, a lot of it too is, 
when you do start getting offers, you can kind of tell your value by the offer, right? Um, you know, one school might offer you 25% or whatever. I mean, it's really hard to get a full scholarship and that'll help tell you what, what your perceived value is. So you don't know your market value, right? Like that's a, no, you know, you basically don't. what you're saying is nobody knows their market value. No. Well, Patty Gallagher knows his market value, right? right? right Patty right. Gallagher is the Heisman Trophy winner. That guy knows his market value, right? right. Chirella brothers probably knew their market value. We know that, right? Like Johnny Hendricks. I mean, the, the list is, you know who it is. Uh, you know the names. We know the names. We know who the best guys are. Jaggers knew his market value. Right. Rollins knew his market value, right? I mean, the mean, it means they knew their market value, right? We, we know those guys are elite. When we say those names, those guys are elite. They're the top of the top. Yeah, absolutely. Market value, right? Dylan came from the small school, D3 Ohio. You know, the D3 knock is, oh, it's not as deep. Well, our fourth state title is going to matter. It, it, I'll, I'll tell you right now, Jaggers was D3. Rollins was D3. Stevers were D3. I mean, the Stever, if you want to talk about someone who was the standard, who made a generation of wrestlers better, Logan Stever knew his value. Right. Here's the wildest thing about all those guys. I don't think all those guys got full rides at Ohio State to start with. I think those guys were guys that were like, we want to go to Ohio state. We want to do what it takes. Yeah. I, I, I you can tell me if that's, I, I think, no, that's I, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't about the Ohio state guys. Yeah. I, 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 I would assume it was like that. Um, I don't know that for sure, but um, I know Logan wanted to go to Ohio state. I heard he committed as a sophomore. I mean, yeah, he was, was all amazing. in, he was all in. Yeah. Yeah. And he wanted to win. And I think he wanted to do what he could do to surround himself with the best guys. I mean, I don't think they, those guys have, like, college loans or anything. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying, right? Yeah. I don't think they had to worry about school, but I don't think those guys went in on a full football-type scholarship and with the equivalents. I, I think that those guys did what it took, and the coaches did what it took to get those guys there. I think what helped me with the, Dylan's recruiting process is I felt like he wrestled all the best wrestlers in the country, so there wasn't anybody we didn't know. and so. Um, he had some really good years where, you know, he won Fargo and he, you know, won at super 32. Um, and then he had some close losses. So he won Ironman that one time. Remember that, you know, when he got the tilt, the guy forgot to count the points. I remember that. I know that one, that one still gets you a little bit. Uh, oh yeah, that, 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 that still bothers me. Oh, yeah. that bo yeah. Bothers me. <laughs> yeah. I was the one calling the match. I was like, yeah. uh. He's hold, he must be holding those back points. Oh, no, yeah. I didn't count any. That was crazy. Is that the only thing he hasn't won, Dom, that he's been in multiple times? Yeah. Wow. Was he fourth as a senior? Yes. Oh, my God. The tournament's yeah. so tough. Yeah. Oh any, any, yeah, he was fourth. And he beat Bo Bartlett. So, I mean, that was this crazy competitive. Oh, God. <laughs> Bartlett was fifth. <laughs> was she, did Van Ness win the weight? He did. And it was he beat Decatur in the semis. You guys lost to Decatur in the, in the third, fourth. Correct. And then who did he beat in the finals? Who did Bo Bart or who did uh? Was oh it uh, Bo Bartlett was fifth? Oh, it was uh, Tauscher. Frankie yeah. Tauscher. He beat uh, Dylan, right? He beat Dylan the. He beat Dylan on a last second takedown. Yeah. Oh, yep. man, I wanted to punch the freaking computer. You don't even know. Yeah. I was so mad because he was just all over the guy the whole match, and then the guy snaked him at the end. Yeah. So scary. knowing, knowing where, you, where you think you stand with the top guys is helpful too. Yeah, you're right. I, I agree that with helps. that. that I helps. think that's the biggest thing in recruiting. I think being confident, knowing you belong, and – Dom, just real quick, the money aspect aspect of the market value. Um, this is not a money sport. Is that – is there a more true way for me to say that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you know, the kids are starting to make money from camps. They've always have. Um, you know, they can get some sponsorships now, so that, that helps. But I'm saying the 9.9 .9 scholarships. Yeah. You're yeah. trying to build – a 34 man roster where you're three deep at every way. It's just really hard to do. Yeah. I mean, 
freaking Northwestern has like a 22 man roster. Did you know that? No. How do you build any depth? And they're good. They're yeah. good. How yeah. is that? Yeah. That guy is a magician. Freaking Storniolo is pretty good. He's got a mullet, but he's pretty good. No, I, mean, I don't envy amazing. these colleges in the recruiting. I saw some of the grind that they went through on it, and they work incredibly hard. Um, I do not envy some of these coaches. I mean, they're out there at tournaments, and they're at Ironman, and they're at Fargo, and they're traveling, and, you know, COVID slowed some of that down. But I saw firsthand how hard these guys worked. Um, you know, we're talking to some coaches, and they're at a bunch of Dylan's events for years. and um and then for him not to commit there uh, i just have the ultimate respect for uh some of these wrestling coaches they're really out there grinding it out imagine if they harnessed that into a fortune 500 company yeah a construction company a fledgling 10 employee company imagine if those guys put that time into business absolutely most they'd of these, million, they'd all be millionaires. Yeah, most of these top coaches, they do it because they love wrestling, they love, love the sport, they love the competition, not because of, they're not doing it for money. No, those, no, a lot of those guys aren't doing it for money. I can no. tell you, my nephew, Ian Miller, he, he's not doing it for money. Yeah. Tom Ryan, he could go back to Long Island and be a multi goal zillionaire. He's not doing it for money. I know that. It's not about money to those guys. Brands Brothers aren't doing it for money. Damian Hahn is not doing it for money. I mean, those guys, they love it. It's their deal. Agam's not doing it for money. Um, even though if you look at the, the mid-majors, right, Josh Moore is not doing it for money. Andresi's not doing it for money. Joel Greenlee's not doing it for money. John Stutzman's not doing it for money. Coach Ludwig at Northern Illinois, not doing it for money. We, we know that. It's a fact. It is a yep, fact. You a can fact. go look at their salaries. If you think those guys are doing it for money, come back and talk to me because I'm going to smack you silly yep. and point out equivalent jobs with equivalent time and the guys would be making double and triple easy, easy Dom. It's not up for debate. Yep. Jaggers, Jaggers is into it, man. Jaggers is into, it. we already know Bo Jordan could go do camps and make a bunch of money. Right. 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 We already know that there's an empire waiting for that guy. If he wants to go do it. Right. He don't want to do it. He wants to coach college wrestling. That's his, that's his deal. Yeah. Turvel guy's not doing it for money. I know that guy's not doing it for money. I, don't, I can't think of a guy who's doing it for money. Right, right. No, you know, it's wild. But uh, give me your shouting, your, 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 your parting shots, your advice to parents beyond going to the RTCs, asking questions. What is the biggest thing that parents can do for homework as far as getting their kids prepared for the recruiting process, whether it's D1, D2, D3, NAIA, JUCO? Yeah, a couple things. I think that you, you you get on these national dual teams or these national duels. Ex get yourself exposed to some of the best wrestling in the country. Um, my sons are fortunate enough to get on some of these teams, and you just rise to the occasion. You, you you wrestle at a better level when you're on these teams. You don't want to let your teammates down. And all of a sudden, you're rubbing elbows with some of the best wrestlers in the country. And then do these national events. You need to go to Super 32, Ironman, Fargo. Um, and then, you know, get yourself introduced to a coach, go to a combine and, you know, see where, where your wrestler measures at and, you know, it'll flush out and then start the process early, you know, be willing to spend your own money. You know, we went to a camp in Iowa um, on our own dime. Uh, we went out and visited Cornell um, and had great experiences. I mean, Do your homework and start early and, and don't be rushed. Spend some money if you have to. Yep, yep. Spend it's your best money. Best investment there. Yeah. That, that's, a, that's great advice. I like that. Dom. Go spend a weekend with your son in a hotel, you know, and have some fun. Make it the drive, too. Trip. The drive or yeah. the flight, right? That's I'm right. guessing you guys drove because you're road warriors. Okay. Last thing I got for you. You're a new grandpa. <laughs> is, that, is, it, is, it, is it better than parenting, by the way? I'm, I, I think so. I'm told it is. We're, she's only uh, my first granddaughter. Here's only three weeks old. But this, um, yeah, this we can't. Daughter, this is your daughter's daughter, correct? Daughter's daughter. Is yes. your daughter your oldest child? Yes. What is the order? Give me the ages and the uh, your kids' ages and names. Yep. So Marissa's 25, Damien's 23, Dylan's 21, and Devin's 18. Is Damien a teacher? Yep. Oh man. 
teacher coach. He's it's coach a labor Russell. of love. Yeah, he loves it's it. It's a labor of love. And you know what? We are as short on coaches as I've ever seen. Same thing with officials, Tom. I don't know how – right now the, the middle school where I live does not have a middle school coach is what I was told the other day. Uh, where I teach, I don't believe they have a middle school to coach. It's it's hard to find someone qualified and is available at at two thirty three o'clock. Um, and some of these coaches want to coach, but they're not. They're only available. They have a full time job and they're not available after school. Yeah. Um, so if you can get a teacher that's qualified and is coaching, that's the best way to go. Is Damien in his second year of teaching? He was, yes. Yep. Just started his second year. Yeah. His first year was last year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he stuck with it. Yeah. Good for that guy. Yeah. Oh, what does your daughter do besides raise a baby? Yeah. She's a beautician. She cuts hair. Beautician. She cuts hair. And then where is youngest one is? He's uh, Devin. He's at UT. Devin. So he's just Devin's started. at UT. Yep. Your your kids, unless they're like uh, Dylan, are crazy not to go to the University of Toledo because you're an Absolutely. employee, right? Right. And you guys got some really awesome fringe benefits, right? We do have great benefits. Yeah. That's awesome. Dom, do you have anything else for me? National Middle School Duels, being a dad, being a grandpa, recruiting process. Yeah, we're super excited to have the, the National Duels and partner with our same partners again. I know, Rudis, Track, Defense Soap. UZEB, um, Destination Toledo, Ohio Athletic Committee. Um, we got a great formula. Um, looking forward to seeing the teams back in action and just grow the sport and continue to offer our first rate tournament. Excited. All right. I'll be there with my defense soap wipes, my hand sanitizer, my soap. It's going to be a bomb event. I'm excited for it. I'm always excited for this event. I might have to get my uh, leaf blower out and do a promo. Cause that's usually around that time of year when I'm blowing a bunch of leaves and uh, knock my kids down into the leaves as I'm doing it. Dom, thank you for the time. If you got anything else for you, if we need any updates, if we get open slots or anything like that, we will be promoting it through social media. If people want to contact you, they can email you. Correct. 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 So go to our website and it has um, all the information, national ms duels.com. So national ms duels.com. Go to the site. Check it out. It's got all the live broadcast links, all the contact information, and we keep it up to date and relevant. Awesome. We didn't quite make the Barbarian Hour. We're going to be just short a little bit, but I'm all right with that. I got to go check the Miller boys out and make sure they had a good day at school. You got anything else for me, Dom? No. Thanks, Seb, for having me on and looking forward to seeing you. Let's hook up. All right. Stick around here. Hello wrestlers and coaches, I'm Teague Moore. I spent 20 years coaching at the Division I level in the NCAA, 15 of those years as a head coach. During that time, I helped a lot of wrestlers and parents navigate the recruiting process. I've now opened my own consulting business to do just that, to help you navigate the recruiting process. There's a lot of unanswered questions. How do scholarships work? What program would be right for my son? Or better yet, what coach would be right for my wrestler? I can help answer these and many other questions. Feel free to email me or call me at the information listed below and we can set up your first consultation today. I look forward to working with you and helping you make the right choice.